और हाउ इज इट मिनट रिकॉर्डिंग क्या यू कैन स्टार्ट नाउ नंदीप यू राइट सो yeah so so hello everyone welcome to microsoft copilot and viva days 2024 and we are pretty much excited to show our session on github copilot right so this is kind of a day where you, you will get hands on sessions by expert and community leaders and we will have more deep dive into the microsoft copilot microsoft viva modules as well as the related technologies and again there are exciting prizes to be won so watch out for all the sessions get insights from them and then you, you stand a chance to win exciting prizes All right. So today that we are going to discuss about how you can explore the GitHub Copilot to build the future for your coding. Okay. So it is kind of an exciting time to start developing alongside AI as a pair programmer. So GitHub Copilot excites the developer by giving code completion suggestion in various languages. So for example, if you are coming from the background of open source, maybe if you are using JavaScript, or even if you are coming from the .NET kind of an backgrounds, GitHub Copilot covers you all. So I, I just want to imagine your world where writing code feels like more like collaborating with intelligent partner than struggling through the lines of syntax. Okay, so in that case, GitHub Copilot uh, brings us closer to the reality by using the cutting edge AI technology to assist developers in their coding journey. Okay, so GitHub Copilot is kind of an AI powered coding assistant. which is developed by github in collaboration with open ai and it is designed to help developers write code more efficiently and with fewer errors by providing code suggestions auto completions which is directly integrated with your ides integrated development environment like visual studio visual studio code and and many more so in this session we will explore how github copilot works its potential impact on the way we write the code and the exciting possibilities to That, that kind of an open sub for the future of the software development so that is what we are going to cover in today's session before we start the session quick introduction myself nandeep nachan i am from pune i am microsoft mvp as well as microsoft certified trainer author of three books including shape on framework shape on hybrid as well as viva connection and on to the right hand side here are few of the social media handles to get in touch with me and with me today is smita Hello, all. myself Smita Nasir. I am from Pune, India. I am having 14 plus experience in Microsoft technology. I am a Microsoft MVP as well as Microsoft Certified Trainer. I am author of these two books, and these are some of my social handlers by which you can just get in touch with me. All right. So this is the agenda that we are going to talk about today. So we'll have an overview of GitHub Copilot. I, I know most of you have been using GitHub Copilot, but for them, for the people who are at least not started or just starting up with their copilot journey we will cover like what is been by github copilot and then we will see the major thing like how the prompt engineering works with github copilot what are the key features and capabilities which are offered by github copilot we will also see another good exploration of github copilot chat a chat experience with github copilot which will help you to create a code or maybe fix the code bugs issues through the chat interface and then we will also see like uh, if in case uh, you use video studio code as your ide how we can go ahead install and set up the github copilot there again there are few couple of things that we, we, are, we are just going to quickly check on about uh, github depend about as well as github code spaces so these are the things that, that we are going to cover but with that let's um, have a overview of uh, github copilot so just to give you idea like uh, we as a programmer we use variety of ides it it could be visual studio visual studio code it could be neovim it could be any anything else and then depending on our specific need and preferences we start developing those but now that we do have few of the challenges as well as few of the goals that we need to think upon so let's have a look at them first so let's see from the developer community what are the goals and the challenges we have so the first one is improve developer efficiency so writing a code can be a time consuming and copilot aims to accelerate the process by offering a context aware suggestions and reducing the need for developers to write the repetitive or boilerplate code manually 
The second one is to simplify the complex code. So the modern software projects often involve the complex code bases and the developer spends a significant time navigating through the various files and understanding direct interrelationship between the components. So the co-pilot's motivation includes the simplifying the code creation by considering the broader context of the code, encompassing the multiple files and the tabs in the integrated development environment that is the IDE. Then the next one, how we can just reduce this repetitive thing. So the developers commonly encounter the repetitive patterns in their code, such as writing the similar functions or the structures across the different files. So the GitHub Copilot is designed to recognize these patterns and generate the appropriate code snippet, reducing the need for the developers to type out the repetitive sections manually. Then we can just learn from existing code. So the leveraged vast amount of code available in public repositories by training on diverse code bases. So the copilot aims to learn from real world examples and provide the suggestions that align with the common coding practices, styles, and as well as the patterns. So the next one, how we can just foster this collaboration. So the GitHub copilot encourages the collaboration by enabling the developers to share and reuse the code more efficiently. So it facilitates the exchange of ideas and the best practices within the developer community by suggesting the code snippets that align with established conversations and the standards. So the next one is easy conversation burden. So the writing the code requires a deep understanding of the syntax logic and project specific details. So Copilot seeks to reduce some of the cognitive load on the developers by offering the intelligent suggestions, allowing them to more focus on the high level design decisions and the problem solving skills. And the last one is how we can just establish this feedback mechanism. So the Copilot, GitHub Copilot is motivated by an interactive feedback loop so as the developer use the tool, their inter interactions contribute to the learning process, helping the system continuously improve its suggestions and adapt to evolving coding practice. Now, place where projects can get started, where the developers collaborate and where the open source community builds and maintains the world's code. So the GitHub is widely used platform for hosting and collaborating on the software development projects. It also serves as a central hub where developers can store their code repository, track the changes and work together with collaborators. So the GitHub utilizes the Git version control system which allows the developers to manage the different versions of their code base efficiently. So on a GitHub, developers can create the repositories to store their code, manage the issues, as well as the bug tracking, perform the code reviews, and collaborate with others to the features like a pull request and a branching. So it provides a web-based interface along with desktop and command line tools, making it accessible to developers across the various platform and the skills level. So the GitHub has become an essential tool for the both open source and the private project. It's facilitating the collaboration among the developers worldwide. It also offers a range of the features to streamline the software development process from the version control to project management, making is a cornerstone of modern software developer workflows. Now let's see this GitHub Copilot. So your AI programmer. So the GitHub Copilot is an AI powered code completion tool developed by the GitHub in collaboration with OpenAI. It is designed to assist the developers in writing the code more efficiently by providing the contextually relevant suggestions and completing the repetitive task. So using the machine learning models trained on the vast amount of code from the open source repository, GitHub Copilot can understand the context of the code being written and generate the accurate suggestions for completing it. So these suggestions can range from the entire lines of code to function signatures, variable names, and more and more. So GitHub Copilot integrates the seamlessly with popular 
code editors like a Visual Studio Code, enabling the developers to access its suggestions directly within their coding environment as the developers interact with the co-pilot. So the providing the feedback and the corrections, the tool learns and improves over time and becoming the increasingly adept at the providing helpful and accurate suggestions. So overall, GitHub Copilot aims to streamline the coding process, reducing the need for repetitive typing and boost the developer productivity by harnessing the power of AI to assist with the code creation. It also represents an existing steps forward in the evolution of the developer tools, offering a glimpse into the future of coding assistant. So let's talk about the five key points in regards to GitHub Copilot. So the first one is the AI power co com code completion. So the GitHub Copilot leverages the advanced artificial intelligence models trained on the vast amount of code to provide the intelligent code completions suggestions as the developers write. So it analyzes the context of the code being written and generate the relevant suggestions to assist the developers in their coding tasks. The second one is a natural language interface. So developer can interact with GitHub Copilot using a natural language within their code editors. They can describe the functionality they want to implement in a plain English language or code commands and the GitHub Copilot the copilot will generate the corresponding course repairs based on the provided description. So the third one is to support for the multiple language programming language. So the GitHub Copilot supports a wide range of programming languages, including the popular languages like JavaScript, Python, Java, C++ and many more. So this broad language supports makes Copilot versatile and applicable to the various development projects. So the fourth one is the continuous learning and the improvement. So the GitHub Copilot learns from user feedback and the corrections provided by developers as developer interacts with the Copilot and make adjustments to suggestions the tool learns and improves over the time becoming more accurate and efficient in generating the helpful code snippets and the last one is the integration within the code editors so the programmers uses a variety of ideas depending on their specific needs and preferences so the GitHub Copilot seamlessly integrates with popular code editors like a Visual Studio Code, allowing a developer to access its suggestions directly within their coding environment. So this integration enhances the developer's workflow by providing a real-time code completion and assistance as the developer writes the code. All right, so with that, let's get into the demo and see like how we can manage your GitHub Copilot individual subscription. OK, so th there are various subscription that we'll be talking about during the session, but let's focus on the individual one. So for that, what I will do is uh, I will go on to the GitHub.com. So this is a place where you can get started with your GitHub so by creating the project, by contributing to the repositories, raising the issues, um, starting the discussions and all those kind of things. So this is your landing page, github.com. So you can see that I already have logged into this github.com. So you need to have account into the github.com to get started with that. So I do have that. I have logged in here. So the next thing is now that we want to set up a GitHub Copilot trial or a subscription for your personal account. OK, so in that case, what you can do is on to the right hand top corner of this page or maybe any of the page that you are on to the github.com. Click your profile photo, which is at the very top right corner. OK, so just click your profile photo and then you should be able to see something called called as your copilot. OK, so this is the thing that you should be able to see. Once you click your copilot on to the GitHub copilot page, you should be able to see the start free trial. So since I already have the license, I am using my lessons, but if in case you want to go ahead, start the free trial of using GitHub Copilot, you can click that start free trial and then it will get you started. So from here you can see that we can get started with Copilot and as Smita said, we will be able to use this across various ideas, including Visual Studio, Visual Studio Code, JetBrains, Veeam or NeoVeeam, all those kind of and popular IDEs are supported by GitHub Copilot. The second thing here is like uh, the policies, like how do you want these suggestions matching onto the public code? So if in case you turn it allow, you will be given the suggestions which are matching from the public code. For example, if you for any kind of a secret reason for your organization, you want to block it so that GitHub Copilot co will not show any suggestions matching the public code. In that case, you can turn it block. And this then applies to 
your entire organization or at least uh, your, your entire projects that you will be creating under your account. OK, so this is a place from where you can turn the setting allowed or block so that GitHub Copilot can give the suggestions which are matching from the public code because when we start writing the code, obviously GitHub Copilot doesn't write the code on its own, but it looks out for the similar matching code. How that we are going to see in the subsequent slides, but it goes ahead and shows the close matching code and give that as a suggestion inside of your IDEs. OK, so that ID could be Visual Studio Code and another part. But if you want to enable that experience or if you want to dis disable that experience, it is in control of you. So either you can set it allow or set it blocked. Now that for example, if you block it in that case, only from your organization, it will be able to give you the matching code, but it will not give you any matching code from the public repositories which are available. OK, so if in case you are just working on your own, maybe go ahead and make it allowed. For example, if you are working for for an organization, depending on the security settings that you want to apply there, maybe consider it to be as blocked. All right, so then again, you can allow the GitHub to use your code snippets from the code editor for the product product improvement. So that means giving the feedback back to the GitHub Copilot. So if you want that GitHub Copilot should take your take the product improvements from the code that you are writing, you can consider this to turn on or turn off. OK, so these are the settings that you have got in your control. So like how do you want GitHub Copilot to suggest your suggest the code suggestions for you? that you have the control and then again, for example, if you want to give any kind of an affiliates to third party or maybe if you want to use GitHub Copilot want to use your code snippet for the product improvements, you have those controls in your hand, right? Uh, now that for example, if you want to modify your Copilot subscri individual subscription, in that case again, you need to go to the settings. So we are right now onto the setting page. So again, click onto your profile icon, go to the settings, but we, we are already here. So in again in, into the settings uh, here we do have billing and plan section. So you need to go to the billing and plan section and then here we do have option for um, plans and usage. OK, so here we do have got options for plans and usage. So based on like um, how you will be built upon using the GitHub Copilot, all of the summary you should be able to see it from here. OK, so here you can see that this is my current plan, which is GitHub Pro, but again from here, I can downgrade it to free or even I can upgrade. So th this is what I will be charged per month for using this kind of a plan. And again, for example, if you want to start your first organization here with CICD depend about which we are going to cover a bit later. So from there you can go ahead and start creating your organization and then you will get all those depend about kind of a feature as well as the CICD features which are powered by your GitHub Copilot. Again, for example, if you want to see the usage of your GitHub Copilot per month, you should be able to do it from here. For example, if in case you are using any of the GitHub actions, you should be able to see all of the usage as well as the spending limit for that here, as well as for example, if you are using any of the GitHub packages or maybe the storage or the code spaces, which we're going to cover a bit later, uh, all the storage uh, as well as the usage information you should be able to see it here. OK, so the, and this was a quick demo like how you can go ahead, start utilizing or at least um, start enabling your GitHub Copilot and then work from there. Now that let's see like how does the GitHub Copilot works in, in a brief. So once you enable your editor provides the context to Copilot. So the GitHub Copilot uses the OpenAI Codex model and the GPT-3 behind the scenes. So it's return the suggestions to your editor where you choose what to accept or ignore. So let's see in a deep how does it exactly work. So the GitHub Copilot provides the context from the local files. It's not attached to a repository. So the file being edited could be the hosted on the GitHub or in any other repo, but it's not a requirement. So the GitHub Copilot shares the data in short life way. So it's shared just long enough for the GitHub Copilot to provide a suggestion. So it does not take that code and it put it back into the data model for the suggestions and the GitHub Copilot uses a 
transformative model. So the think of something like a Google Translate. So you put in some words in English, translate it into the another language. So the Google Translate has not seen that exact sentence before the necessarily and translated into that new language. So the Google Translate understand the semantic and the definition of the words, language patterns, and whether there is a subject or the direct object and based on the input suggest an appropriate result. So you could think about the GitHub Copilot as a translation tool and the GitHub Copilot learns how the people write a code by looking at a lots of examples. Sometimes it seems the same line of code repeated in many different projects and when this happens, it might think that these lines are a common way of writing a code instead of something unique. So the GitHub Copilot might suggest these common patterns when it seems similar situations so to make it sure it does not suggest anything proprietary or the secret so the github copilot team created a filter to prevent that github copilot includes a filter which detects the code suggestions matching the public code on github so you can choose to enable or disable the filter and when the filter is enabled, so the GitHub Copilot checks the code suggestions with their surroundings code of about 150 characters against the public code on the GitHub. So if there is a match or the near match, the suggestion will not be shown to you. So this is done on the service side of the GitHub Copilot. And let's see why it's saying that only 150 characters. So the GitHub Copilot limits the suggestions to 150 characters to strike a balance so it's not too short to miss the important code yet it avoids the relieving too much so this slide typically covers about two lines of code allowing it to detect the similarities effectively so research shows that the limit does not affect the developer experience much maintaining the same level of suggesting suggestion quality and acceptance rate even with the IP filter in the place. All right, so now that let's see like how the prompt engineering work with GitHub Copilot. So a simple concept like whenever you are working with Copilot or at least with uh, open AI or any kind of an AI models, obviously there's a concept of prompt. So prompt is nothing but your input to those AI models and then you get the completion. That means the output from the user. Okay, so so now that we do have two things here prompt that means your input to the model and then we do have completion. Uh, so can I can I request everyone to be on mute please? All right, so we, we do have a prompt there and then again um, we, we do have completion. OK, so now that let's see like when it comes to the GitHub Copilot, how the prompt engineering work with GitHub Copilot. So there, there's a whole lot of uh, architecture that that goes behind that, but let us try to see that in detail right now. OK, so here is the breakdown of how GitHub Copilot turns your prompts into the smart usable code, which is your completion. OK, so first thing that it, it starts with is the securing the prompt transmission and the context gathering. So this is the place from where it gets started. OK, so the process starts when you send a message to GitHub Copilot using a secure connection called HTTPS, and this keeps your message safe and private. Copilot gets your message, which could be a chat or which could be a command that you wrote in inside of your code and at the same time copilot gathers some details for example it looks at the code before and after where you are writing so it understands where you are or what kind of a thing that you are working on secondly it checks the type of file that you are editing so like uh, if it's a python file or a javascript file and this help it give suggestion that makes sense for that type of file Thirdly, that it also checks other tabs that you have open so that the suggestions fit well with the rest of your project. So if in case you have created any other files which are supporting your project, it will also start looking at that as well. So this is the first thing that happens under the context gathering from the prompt. Second thing that we need to have the content filtering. OK, so once you go that, there's a content filtering as well. So before Copilot start understanding what you want and suggesting the code, it checks for something to keep you safe. So it makes sure that uh, it, it does not include uh, or at least you does not include any personal information like name, addresses, ID numbers in the suggestions, and this keeps your private details safe. 
it also uses the special tool to stop the hate speech offensive language or any kind of an inappropriate content from appearing as a completion so this help keep the environment friendly and respectful for everyone using the copilot the third thing that it does is with the context analysis so after checking the content github copilot looks at all the information that it has gathered like the code that you are working on type of the file and this help copilot understand what you are asking for and what you are trying to do with your code so this is what uh, copilot does next like it figures out what you want to do from what you wrote and it looks for important words or phrases that tells it what you need and then it connects what you want to do with the actual coding actions or the things on your code snippet to do and this turns your general idea into the specific task for your code to accomplish then obviously it generates the code which comes in into the fourth step so after understanding what you want to do copilot does few things like it gives you a suggestion for the code that fit the way you write the code it suggests good names for the functions as well as the variables it tries to have that best practices being followed it creates the whole piece of code which is correct and fit well where you are writing them it makes sure that the code matches the language the framework that you are using as well as the rules of your project so okay because whenever we set up the project we also create the rule files so it respect those rules as well uh, and at the same time it also follows the special rules or style that you have set how the code should look and how it should work okay so during the code suggestion it respect your settings as well once it is done with that the fifth step is with the user interaction so you are presented with the generated code for review and interaction and you have option to accept that code as it is or even you can make a modification to the suggested code or even you can reject that code suggestion so now that it is the user interaction who is using that github copilot either to accept the code reject the code or make the modification the sixth step now is to have the feedback loop initiation so the GitHub Copilot initiates the feedback loop based on your actions to achieve few things like it can grow its knowledge from the accepted suggestions. So for example, if you have accepted the suggestions which was given by Copilot, it will take that feedback so that next time whenever someone tries to get the similar kind of an code generated, it might give more preferences based on how you have accepted. For example, if you reject that, probably it will it will lower the priority for that generated code and it might not give that suggestion to the others based on the similar context it also learns and improves through the modification and the rejection of its suggestions okay so based on the suggestions that you do or the interactions that you do whether you accept make the modification or reject the code it creates that internal feedback loop to give next suggestions and then in the seventh step it um, also has the prompt history retention so throughout the coding session copilot retains the history of prompts all of the contact details and the interaction and this history serves as the contextual references which allows copilot to provide the consistent and coherent suggestions so in the code the examples or the demos that we are going to show you you will see that we, we, are, we will just keep writing our prompt but at least it will maintain or prevent that prompt history so that based on my past history of the prompts it will give give us the next suggestions or it it will it will try to suggest like what i am developing the application and how best i will be able to develop that and then in the last step which is uh, step number 8 the history retention takes place so it repeat for the subsequent kind of prompts so the process is repeated as you provide more prompts with the copilot continuously handling user request understanding the intent generating the code in, into the response and over the time copilot applies the cumulative feedback and interaction data including the content details uh, to improve the understanding of the user intent and refine its general code generation kind of an capability so this is the eight step kind of an process which happens with the user prompt so think of this is like maybe you are interacting with any of the model so it could be an, an ai model and what things happens into the background okay so 
it, it is not like it, it does just directly go ahead and start giving you the suggestions, but there are a whole lot of things which happens into the background, including the uh, prompt transmission as well as the context gathering because it needs to know like on which files you are working, which projects you are working, what is the code that you have written previously and what is the code that you are trying to achieve. Then it does the content filtering as well because obviously we, we don't want any personal information or at least so, some kind of an hate kind of an content being um, circulated or at least generated by the GitHub Copilot. It will do all that content analysis and then it will give you the code generation. Again, once it gives the code generation, it will give you an option to accept or reject. And based on your user interaction, whether you accept the code or um, whether you reject that code snippet, it will initiate that feedback loop and it will use that for your future interactions, not just with you, but with the other developers as well who are writing the similar lines of code. And obviously it does take care of all of the prompt history so that it can know that in the in the um, past what kind of an code that you have written for that particular session and then it can give you more and more suggestions. So this is how it happens. Now that let's see like how does it work in the uh, at, at the core because we we know that GitHub Copilot utilizes LLM large language model to provide the context aware code suggestions. Okay, but how does it happens in the background? Because there is a process called as a fine tuning. So fine tuning is pretty much essential to adopt the LLM for any specific task which can enhance the performance. But GitHub Copilot take it a step further by asking or at least by using the LoRa kind of a fine tuning model. Because for example, if you have uh, used fine tuning onto the models like GPT-3, GPT-3.5 Turbo or GPT-4, you must have observed that all those uh, fine tuning is very much expensive at the time. Also, it is very much time consuming. So obviously, for example, if uh, GitHub Copilot start using that, it, it won't be able to give you suggestions very quickly. So for that, it uses something called an LoRa fine tuning, which is a rank kind of a fine tuning. So the traditional full fine tuning means to train all parts of the neural network, which can be slow, and it can be heavily reliant onto the resource, all, all of the resources. But this LoRa fine tuning is a clear alternative uh, or maybe kind of an, some kind of a clever alternative. And it, it is used to make the large pre-trained large language model work uh, better for a specific task without redoing all of the training. So like how does the LoRa work? So instead of uh, changing everything, LoRa adds the smaller trainable parts to each layer of the pre-trained model so that it can quickly train its underlying model and move forward. And secondly, the original model remains the same, which saves the time and resources. So that way it is very much quicker. Secondly, like what is the great thing about LoRa is like it beats other adoption methods like adapters and prefix kind of and tuning. And it like um, getting the great results with the fewer moving parts. So th that is where LoRa has got some upper hand when it comes to the GitHub Copilot for the fine tuning. So in the simple word, LoRa fine tuning is about working smarter, but not harder to make the LLM better for your specific coding requirement when using the Copilot. All right, so now that let's see the key features and capabilities. So the first one is a core suggestions autocomplete. So the GitHub Copilot provides the core suggestion as you type to help the complete the different line of code. It's also support for multiple IDs and programming languages. So GitHub Copilot is available where you want it. So on your desktop using a popular IDs or in your browser using the GitHub code spaces. So it is available as an extension in Visual Studio Code, Visual Studio, Vim, the JetBrain source of IDs and the Azure Data Studio. So the GitHub Copilot supports the various programming language like Python, JavaScript, TypeScript, Ruby, Go, PHP, Swift, Rust, C Sharp, C++, Java, HTML, CSS, as well as the SQL. So that enables the developers to utilize its functionality across the various project. And here is a list of some of the supported languages we have provided. 
so it's a context where the core suggestions so auto generators suggestions come from the context within the file for example the function name core comments file names and many more things it's also integrations with the visual studio code so the github copilot is available as an extension inside a visual studio code so interactive documentation so to make your code more readable and maintainable so you can just add the code documentation and this can be tedious task so we can use the copilot to help the generate the documentation comments for our code so for example let's say some of the demo like for example in the editor you can just select the code block to for the add method and then you can just press the control plus on your keyboard to bring up the copilot inline chat and you can just enter the slash talk slash command in the input box and press the unassign so that's why you can just do it then there is a natural language input so no syntax needs to be learned to use the copilot github copilot instead use the natural plain english language to work with it then there is a pull request summary so there is a, so you need you will need a copilot enterprise plan which requires the github enterprise cloud to use the pr summary so the github copilots keeps a track of your work suggested description and helps the reviewers reasons about your changes so talk it also talks to your repositories so if you have ever gone to a new repositories and have no idea what's happening even through the readme it's available there you can now use the github copilot chat to explain the repository view it is right in this github.com okay so now that let's get into your quick demo and let's see how we can go ahead and use the github copilot in visual studio code so now that i'm into the visual studio code and onto the left hand side here you will see all of the things which are available and extension is one of that so once you go into the extensions just search for github copilot or just search for copilot and it will give you the suggestions. Um, OK, so OK, right now. All right, so here you can see that we do have a couple of extensions available GitHub Copilot as well as GitHub Copilot chat. I already have it enabled, so that's the reason I can see only option to disable or uninstall. But for the first time, uh, you will be able to uh, see the install button and then once you install it it will also ask you to log in once you log in you should be able to use the github based on the settings that we have seen in the first demo all right so now that uh, let's get into the demo and um, let's see how the github okay, compiler can help us interrupt. yeah but we do we have, have 10 minutes okay, sure yeah. yeah yeah sure go ahead so um okay so now that let, let's start with uh, creating a new file so i have got new file and then just click on Control i so that we will have some suggestions from there so what what we want to do is we just want to generate a sample json file with customer data so i will just click there and then we can see the content it is getting generated okay so we already have that and this is the option which i was talking about it will give you the accept discard or any kind of a suggestion so we will accept it so this is the customer data that we have got let's say if i do control i one more time and it uh, we can add like uh, add city property to each customer And then what it can do is it should go ahead and add the city property to each of the customer. Okay, so here you can see that it has done that. Probably we'll just discard this at this time. And then now that we have this particular uh, JSON with us, now that let's say we want to go ahead and uh, create TypeScript, TypeScript class to uh, represent the customer. So for that, I can again go into the Go GitHub Copilot, or at least even I can click those um, star icons, and I will say, say like uh, generate. TypeScript class to represent customer. OK, so now that uh, you, you can see here that customer can be anything, but since we have the context of using this JSON file, it will go ahead and create the class which is representing representing the properties of this particular class only. OK, so here you can see it, this thing is happening. So again, here you can see that we, we it is it is it is respecting all of the properties like ID, name, email and phone. So all those things are done. So I can accept or close that and here we have a clause. Uh, OK, now that let's get into another demo like uh, where probably we, we need to go ahead and just uh, have the calculator kind of a thing. So let me just go ahead and uh, do a control I again so that we can ask GitHub Copilot to create a calculator class in um, C sharp to add and subtract the numbers. 
Okay, so what it will do is it will it should just go ahead create a class for you and here you can see that th there are a couple of methods added here and now that we can start writing our code here as well. So let me just accept this and what we what we, I will do is I will just um, have one const here const C equal to uh, new and it will auto suggest that as a calculator and then here we will just do C dot and then you can see that it is giving me the suggestions that I can use add method with this and um, the answer will be three. Even we, we can do C dot and again it will give another thing and we can do the um, subtract from here. Okay, so th this is a simple thing like how we can work with that. But now that let us see like how we can use GitHub Copilot chat with this. So Visual Studio Copilot chat offers you AI assistant that could help you writing the code faster and better. So it is AI powered pair programmer that can answer your questions such as the code snippet, explain the code logic and chat with you about your project. Okay, so you can use Copilot to code faster and better, and it helps you to avoid errors and learn the new skills. So these are the uh, commands which are available with slash. So for example, if I go back to uh, my code here and if I just do uh, do uh, uh, if, I, if I just select this particular uh, method, if I just do a control I, and I will just type slash talk and it will go ahead and generate the documentation for that. Okay, so I can accept or discard even I can make those changes. So let's say for example, if I go ahead here and um, do a control I again and I will just say, say slash explain. So here you can see that the GitHub uh, Copilot chat has been opened and it will give me the uh, what what this particular method is doing. Okay, so here it can uh, say like this is the subtract method which maybe subtract uh, subtract uh, two numbers. Let's say for example, for some reason I, I made some uh, mistakes here. Instead of subtracting the number, I added those two numbers. So again, for that I will go ahead, select this, and then I will use the slash fix here. Okay, so once you use the slash fix, it will give you the suggestions like how you will be able to fix the code. Okay, so here it, it, it is saying me like uh, the method name is saying it as a subtract, but maybe I'm doing the wrong way. I'm adding the two numbers and then it will suggest me how the method should be rewritten. So I can again uh, get that information. Now that for example, if you want to uh, generate the code, um, so even you can use slash generate. So here I will again go ahead and, uh, oh, sorry, I need to do control I and then I will do slash generate. And then what I will say is like um, generate method to uh, multiply numbers. Okay, and then it should go ahead and it will uh, create. It should create a method to multiply those two numbers. So th this is everything is uh, possible with um, with GitHub Copilot as well as GitHub Copilot Chat. Even for example, uh, if you if you have written a complex code and if you want to make make it uh, optimize, again in that case you can do a Control I do a slash optimize here and then it will help you to optimize your code as well. Okay, so these are the things that you should be able to do with all those slash commands which are available. So it, it has made some changes, but if in case you have any of the complex code written, it can it can go ahead and give you the optimization. The main thing that comes with uh, the GitHub Copilot chat is for writing your test cases. Okay, so in that case, I can just do slash test, and then it can help you the write help you to write the test cases for your method. Okay, so again, here you can accept, and then you can see that um, it is it is able to uh, write the entire thing. I should have taken that to the uh, next file where it has written all those uh, test cases, and here you can see that. It has written all the test cases like, for example, what will happen when you will um, multiply two numbers when you will multiply with uh, zero and then again, for example, when you multiply the positive and negative number. So it will write all those test cases for you. So, okay, so these are the all flash commands that will happen with you. The next thing is like, uh, for example, whether, whether you are using GitHub uh, Copilot individual or for business and the Copilot, these are or the Copilot enterprise, these are the things which are available to you. So based on the pricing as well as uh, the Copilot business or enterprise, these are the features which will be available to you or not available to you. So all these things um, are available to you with uh, Copilot individual. Uh, Business include few more things, including audit logs and extremely specific files and uh, GitHub Copilot includes everything. And more things here is about uh, summarizing your pull request and everything, which are the good things. Quickly moving ahead, um, this GitHub Dependa bot will help you to 
generate or it, it, it is kind of an um, securing your open source code. It will suggest you, for example, if you have written something bad, it can create those issues for you. And then lastly, quickly, like we do have GitHub uh, code spaces as well. Uh, because of the time constraint, I won't be able to show you a demo of this. But again, you can use this cloud based development environment, which is going provided by GitHub Copilot and use the GitHub Copilot as well as GitHub Copilot chat instead of that as well. All right, so I think we are just on time so with that. Thank you very much uh, for to all the organizations for organizers for uh, organizing this um, event as well as to all of the sponsors and the partners for having this event. And th thank you all the attendees for attending us today. Thank you and back to you. Yeah, and thank I'm you. Thanks for, thanks for your insightful session. Your expertise and engaging presentation style made the session informative. Thank you. Yep, thanks all.